Kirk teaches us how to kill a god and disrupt paradise. That's right, on this episode of Star Trek Universe, we'll be talking about the apple, right after these mysterious instructions delivered unto you by that strange metal wire hanging out of your heads. <laughs> so that's what that's for. That and wire play. <laughs> I don't even want to know what that is. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Welcome into Star Trek Universe. We are continuing our mission to rewatch slash watch all of Star Trek, the original series. I am an old hand at this Star Trek stuff myself. My name, David C. Robertson. My name, Effie Opellers. Uh, and I do the slash watch part. Yeah, the first watch. The yeah, slash it's, first it, I've watch. never seen this before. You've I've never barely seen, seen it. it now. Like, truly, it <laughs> doesn't even count if you've only seen it once. Yeah. If a tree falls in the woods, but you've only seen it fall once. Yeah. You're not a real fan. Name three episodes. <laughs> uh, uh, the apple. Uh, uh, what it would do, like, right before this one? <laughs> <laughs> The, the, no, We Are Nomad? Is that the title? Oh. We Are Nomad. The Changeling. I know, I know. It was The Changeling. I did remember, but it would it wouldn't have been funny if I, if I, if I, no. I know, I know. Can't <laughs> no, help that. You know what I thought? Nomad Eye. <laughs> like, like No Kill Eye, you know, from Devil in the Dark. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> well done well done oh god the memory alpha synopsis the enterprise crew discovers an eden-like paradise on gamma trianguli 6 controlled by a machine that is revered by the local humanoid primitives as a god this time it's vol it's not landrew mm -hmm. i was fully expecting there to be a guy underneath the earth like it's a fucking mouth that functions as a portal but apparently only to throw fruit into yeah you um, just throw crops I, and fruit and i don't i want to know so much more yeah yeah i get that because why is there an ancient machine that what are the dim times like what how did this come to be yeah all of that shit yeah i want to know all of that like how did they you know at some point you would assume that there were, there they were reproducing like normal. Um, does You'd Kirk, so does Kirk killing their god? Uh, does it uh, is it the prime directive being squandered or thrown out, or is it okay with the prime directive because clearly something else came and corrupted the society in the first place? Um, yeah, but but is does the Prime Directive give a shit about that? Well, I I've, yeah. I feel like are are there extra clauses in there? Like I know Kirk thinks so. Kirk is very much like ah, who gives a shit about that Prime Directive if I am if I disagree with this this cultural cultural yeah. society being stuck? Like, yeah, it has to still agree with my norms. And once um, again, you have he and McCoy talking about. Oh, these people are stagnant. They need to move on. They need to. They need to exactly. grow. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I'm glad Spock was there to again give give some some counterpoints to 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 that. But that's why I was fully expecting there to be someone behind the machine, because you, if there's not the exploitative element, like there's there's you have really very few arguments to in favor of McCoy and Kirk. Yeah. But you Besides have... the eternal argument that keeps coming back where it's like, you know, you need struggle because why, why would you be happy if y you could grow through, you know, feeling like shit, I guess. Well, one of the... I've never quite, quite understood, but... You know. One of the real uh, messy parts of the episode and one of the things that makes it not a very good episode to me Mm -hmm. I've never really liked the apple. Um, it's iconic, but sure, I don't love it. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. even really like it. Like it's fine. We understand. Like okay, well, you know, philosophies aside, this thing is destroying the enterprise. It's gonna kill everybody. It's fair you know, enough. Yeah, all that. Yeah. So okay, which it's only doing because 
it sees a threat in outsiders being essentially anti-religious in this instance. Mm-hmm. It is, it is very, and it, it, it has good reason to think, ooh, they, they're going to fuck with my rules because they'll, they're outsiders, you know, better, yes. better strike them with lightning. Absolutely um, what they do, too. Yeah, because they end up proving the, the Val right in every sense, so, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it's a self-defense, sort of, not quite. Uh <laughs> but like it didn't have to pull in the enterprise essentially like if right. it had just killed the landing party maybe the ship would have moved on but you know it's it's, it's one of these situations where like i really want to know where vol came from i want to know mm-hmm. what vol is is it an ancient machine that like right. they're a version of their civilization put there is I mean, what 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 is this? Why does yeah, because there are have these rules exactly, and there are dim times, and and there are, there is a like the the wires are implanted at some point. Mm-hmm. We don't know how old the guy was at that point. Probably the same age, so old enough to also you'd you'd assume they'd remember that how how it got to be there, but all they seem to remember is ah, it was worse before he took care of the weather and the atmosphere and shit. Mm-hmm. So, it's, it's yeah, it's very much a, like, at some point there was a civilization involved that was advanced enough to build a subterranean machine. Well, see, that's a good, that's, you make a good point. Like, you would think they would remember, but I wouldn't. But I would like to see that on display. Like, because even, you know, give Yeah, but a it has of, become... Within it, a couple of both, months, you and I are going to yeah. remember things differently than what they had when how they happen. Sure, sure. There's a, and there is some legend, some some lore building going on, clearly. But I feel like it's hard to have your a- a cake and eat it too in the sense that you have the, oh, this is how we've been t- talking about the the pre-Val times for 10,000 years. Mm-hmm. This is this is what the story's become. But also, we were all around 10,000 years ago because we don't age. But what... If you are in a civilization that has grown, that is complete stagnation, and mm-hmm. I mean, even me, I work from home. I don't have to care about what day it is usually. I yeah. will not know what. I don't know how long things, how long time has passed. If I didn't have podcasts going on, <laughs> I probably. Hey, really it's been another know. week. There's a new episode. Yeah, fair. Yeah, so that's how I know. Oh, it's a new episode from this show. It's Sunday. Right. So I'm kind of going. Hey, what like what there I want to I want to see uh Akuda or whatever his name was. Uh Sure. <laughs> whatever his name was. I don't remember. I always think of him as William H Macy cuz he looks like William H Macy. <laughs> the actor. Mm-hmm. But um Yeah, I I just want to know uh like what does he remember about having the the thing implanted? What does he remember about the dim times and i think it would have been really interesting for them to kind of explore that and be like oh it was so long ago i don't really remember exactly how that happened yeah you could have gone into that because he also has fucking antenna in his head so he he might just have only been told the version val wants Mm -hmm. wants to be told but it's it's difficult and and at the same time there also needs to be no reproductive system or culture before that or mm-hmm. there would have been children who would now be eternal children, I guess. Mm-hmm. So it it really they they must have like literally just evolved out of the precursor ape fish something like crawled out of the water, become this species, and then within one generation, some other uh, colonizing sort of cultures must have come in and and put their religion underground i guess it's just as soon as you dig into it it doesn't make a fucking lick of sense yeah uh i'd love to make it there's oh absolutely it would be fun to like tinker with it like that's that's absolutely it's it's ripe for headcanon-y shit um but it is uh it is very much a situation sketch from like we we need this for the for the analogy to work and we don't want to think too much about how it got here 
or what will happen after. Mm-hmm. Because if there is a need for this this thing to be here, that must also mean that now the atmosphere reverts to aging, okay, and the weather must be shit, but does the vegetation even... Like, does mm-hmm. everything still function? How will food work? Uh, like, they're going to get help from the Federation, apparently, to l- learn about agriculture, I assume. But it's... Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of question marks, just... On yeah. both sides of this episode, yeah. And there are lots of fingerprints from Gene Elku on this episode. I don't doubt it. <laughs> I mean, you're back to like, like all this, all the weird shoehorn stuff where like Kirk is like bemoaning the fact his duty and the fact that the the, the red shirts yeah. got killed and but like I lost, I'm losing so many people. Like last episode, you lost at least as many red shirts and didn't, you didn't know their names. Yeah. But now, now we know we know them personally, and th- his dad got me into the academy, so I should have taken uh-huh. care of him. You know that, that energy. It's it's interesting for him to struggle with that for a bit, but also, it's an episodic show. He's not going to struggle with it f- for any extended period of time, and not even in this so episode. So it doesn't contribute anything. Exactly, it doesn't influence his his choices throughout this this episode this is one of the reasons i I feel like that was a gene l coon because like yeah. there are a few instances of that shoehorned in but it's not a through line it doesn't no, stay it's a, it's a bit of padding yeah yeah it's just kind of shoved in there uh to like kind of give you like it's almost a, it's like just faking it like faking yeah. depth to the episode exactly because like and, you'll and- remember this episode and going like oh yeah i remember kirk he was man he was like worried about he was upset about the death of those red shirts on the planet you know and it was so powerful but then when you watch the episode it's like a few minutes later he's joking you know a few minutes later right. you yeah. have check off trying to neck with some lady you know on the planet good for him yeah you, uh, you know uh, a second after someone beams a body aboard uh, scotty's like oh i need to walk oh i should go down to paradise like <laughs> people are dying yeah. y'all like, yeah none dude, of you, you guys should are taking not this want to walk yeah and and this is about that sort of force depth in there, like the whole discussion between Spock and McCoy is quite literally, they, they hang the lantern on it by Kirk going, guys, this can wait until after we figured out a way to like not kill everyone on my ship. And like yeah. where we're hiding in the bushes, there's something more urgent going on than should we intervene? Mm-hmm. Kind of huh, got to save some people. But that's, that's clearly the core of the episode is like, we want you to think about Eden, which starts out very fun. Like I, I really like the beginning scenes where it's like, Oh, we're, we, we joked about paradise one time and now it's a running gag within the team. And it sort of Mm -hmm. works for me because it's, it, it's in universe. It still makes sense for them to go garden of Eden with fucking landmines. Like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that makes sense for you to say, but then when it gets more and more and more explicit within the philosophical argument, it's like, okay, guys, we get, we, we get it. We get it. Uh-huh. <laughs> we know what you're going for, again. Um, and I know what I what my opinion on it is, again, and it's not whatever the episode is trying to tell me it is. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, we've definitely got some statements here about, I mean, like, you look at Kirk we and even the way got, he... We even got the, the, the splooshing flowers again. Like, uh, yeah, we did. That's, that's a... That's a Carry over from wow. a similarly themed episode. <laughs> <laughs> I love that that like weird little gong noise that it does when whenever the any flower shoots. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Oops, should have been listening closer. Eh, wow. I was mostly like, oh, there's a lot of dust here, and it sticks in Spock's chest, and it, it looked fun. Yeah, yeah, different kind of. It flower. was different enough. Yeah, different exactly. Kind of it was flower. different enough. Not, um, not quite a flower. Like, it must have been part of the machine, which explains why it doesn't look like a real fucking plant. So, you know, I'm I'm good with it. Oh, that's fun. I like that headcanon. Yeah. Because <laughs> it looks like a fucking periscope on a submarine just, just like, turning and going, aim, fire, hup. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think it's interesting and very, I don't know, I'd love to see if uh, this was part of the original... Uh, teleplay, but I love the fact that Kirk just punches the shit out of Akuda without ever knowing <laughs> if he's going to attack him in the first place. Right? That's just we're being hunted by something else. Oops. Uh, sorry, I hurt you. And he just starts crying. That's a great moment. That's very much a yeah, yeah. You probably shouldn't try to solve everything with your fists, fucking Kirk. Yeah, like, yeah. That that feels like a Gene Elkoon fingerprint, though. For very real. Smart. Yeah. 
It feels no, I like liked, I like that. Yeah. Him like very much pointing out like, yeah, what are you doing here, Kirk? What are you doing here? Yeah, why uh, why is talking always the last resort? <laughs> you're a diplomat, not a soldier, remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think he sees it that way, but sure. Um, oh. But I, and you it's interesting to have this episode where, you know, Kirk and McCoy are so concerned about like changing this society, killing this god. Uh, so worried that these people are st- in stagnation, even though they're happy, mm-hmm. and by their own admission, this paradise. Yeah, um, they're so concerned. All was good before we ran into this shit. You know, uh, for them to produce this episode directly after the Changeling. Yeah, where they literally had a a uh, a probe. That was specifically meant to do exactly what the Federation is doing. Mm-hmm. Seeking out new life and new civilizations and studying yeah. those. Uh, and then like the sort of the warning of that episode seems to be like, be careful. You might mm-hmm. get th- that, that message might get corrupted. That, that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause wh- are are you j- just observing the life or are you enforcing something on that life yeah, of, of that, your norms? Whether that be mechanical perfection or, in this case, your idea of progress, mm-hmm. um, which and is it's, yeah, it's ironic like, that they we would walk do- in, we corrupt the society, they want to kill us now, which they've never done before and are clearly very bad at. Like, mm-hmm. It's just oh boy, it's gonna be a generation, and there will be, there will be war. <laughs> just <laughs> lovely. Yeah, there's actually there I alluded to it, but. Uh, Kirk and crew make some bad decisions here. Mm. And, uh, ultimately it's like, cause they don't stick around. They're basically like, uh, Gordon Ramsay or, um, who's that? Robert Irvine or one of these like hell's kitchen type places yeah. where they're like, we're going to come in and we're going to make your restaurant really good for the first time ever. And then we're going to leave and your business is going to fail. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we're not going to actually it's- teach you how to do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna pretend to teach you, and then you'll fail at doing that for the next six months and go out of business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like uh, it's not Hell's Kitchen; it's a uh, Kitchen Possible or some shit. <laughs> some <laughs> Jesus, but, that's terrible. Uh, but yeah, it's it's one of those one of those shows that I would know by a Dutch translation of the name, probably. So yeah, yeah. but that's what they're doing. Like Kirk is, like, they're like, oh, what yeah. about what about the, you know we're gonna die now? Yeah, but you're gonna have young people. Ah, you'll figure it out. Ha 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 ha. And like, where is this? <laughs> We're laughing along with anything we don't understand. Or yeah. with Spock's name. That was a funny detail. Yeah. It doesn't have to so, be explained, but it's funny. Where is this? Where is this interesting? The way you're going? Oh, you'll, you'll bone soon enough. Like, oh yeah. my goodness. Where is this strange, introspective Captain Kirk worried about the death of his soldiers as he's making jokes about how Spock looks like Satan? Like, mm hmm. I don't know. That but, one was such a fourth wall break where I was like, oh, this is this is just you got some letters, you're hanging the lantern mm-hmm. on it. It it doesn't even make that much sense because it's clearly a like satanic panic uh, type, like, ooh, he looks demonic. But he doesn't yeah. look much like Lucifer per se. Like it's not Satan as he we have imagined yeah. him for ever. I mean, well... If he had red skin, maybe, but it's just the fucking ears, and those aren't even consistently the, the first element you go to when you think of, of Satan. I like, actually know... the fucking leathery wings and the, the, the pitchfork? Uh, hilariously. Like hilariously, I believe Spock was supposed to be red-skinned, and he ate... I would have enjoyed that. The way he consumed food was he had a, pl- a metal plate in his stomach that he, like, charged. <laughs> um... Cool. But yeah, uh, and hilariously though, the the so-called Christians who are so angry about any kind of pointed ears, devil-looking mm-hmm. things, don't understand that in the Bible, like the Lucifer was like the most beautiful angel. He yeah, is, there's uh, no further description of what happens. Yeah, uh, he's as far as I'm aware, not described like as he, you he know, falls, but he, he might he might have a head egg, but that's that's about it. Like, <laughs> Why would he suddenly become monstrous? But that's that's a, a limitation of our imagination where it's been, no, we need monsters to look scary and deformed. And there are lots of things we 
correlate with monstrosity that we find scary or unpleasant or for any number of reasons like evol uh, evolutionarily or because we we have this this prejudice built in sort of over generations of uh what what is a, a correct able-bodied human being uh, mm -hmm. look like and and anything departing from that is disturbing to us um which in and of itself like there's lots of problematic shit inside that that area but it is a thing we see again and again and again in everything mm -hmm. and satan is but one example where it's like ah oh, this is this is your classic this is what has become the the devil archetype of of what we all think of but there's there's like it it there's probably someone who's looked into the origins of that that image oh I'm, but no, it is sure. definitely it is not like eternal or or not culturally uh, uh in, in like like we've we've created that and it is changing ever changing mm -hmm. uh, to an extent like mm. but yeah i i would much prefer to see a lucifer who's just heckin pretty like one of those those aryan blonde boys just with the, yeah. the, the 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 just just give him a give him a slightly different look and uh, from from the angels, but but make him look that fucking pretty, like hell. I mean, we do have uh, Gwendolyn Christie and right Netflix's right, right. Sandman. Still does have the leathery wings and shit, but absolutely, like she's pretty. Yeah, Fuck yeah, it. yeah. Or you can like you can the go blonde with, curls. Oh, works for me. Sure, you can go with Tom Ellis from the Lucifer Show. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but he's not—he's not pretty in that creepy way I'm looking for. He's, really? Like he—he he can be scary in that show, but he's not—he's not that ethereal, elfish beauty yeah. that I'm thinking of. You know? Yeah. I want the 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 sort of Legolas uh, look of of almost, and and maybe and that is interesting because that borders on going oh. Make him queer, make him gayer, which is very much a thing in Lucifer, the the Tom mm -hmm. Alice show, as well, where it is like, oh, we we want our villains to be gay men, and because because a man being too effeminate, that's also well an aberration, and there's there's like a history of that throughout horror. Well, he's which he's, once again read my thesis. <laughs> yeah, he's pansexual on the show Lucifer, but he's also like very much the yeah, protagonist that makes of that show, and he's the hero. So sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's another issue that people, like, uh, religious people, had with that show. Like, oh, I'm sure. Uh, no, How can he be a decent guy? Like, uh, he had some and, points, like in the. Uh, but and that's anyway. uh, same goes for Good Omens. But I haven't finished watching season two yet. Just the opening makes me think of that with uh, Azaraphil and and uh, in the in, in the cosmos at the just giving you the big bang, a big swing. Like that's. Fun, yeah. fun scene. Yeah. yeah. Now, in the in the Neil Gaiman Sandman comics, uh, mm -hmm. Lucifer was a man, but was just very much David Bowie. Yeah, that makes sense. Like Go they figure. drew David Bowie. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> I have I have no problems with that. I have some problems with David Bowie and like sure underage girls, but um, that goes for a lot of people in a lot of different time periods, mm -hmm. unfortunately. All right, so uh, yeah, um, I don't know where we where we left off on this episode uh, on the Apple. Uh, a good question. Were we in trivia already? I don't remember what you told me. <laughs> I have not gotten to trivia yet. No. Um, Fair enough. But you know, I do think there, this episode is a mess. Just overall, <laughs> yeah. Fair I I hate how silly and stupid Chekhov is in a way like it would be fine if he didn't have a bunch of people dying around him that's fair but also i feel like this is kind of Chekhov's coping mechanism throughout maybe a bunch of shit. like and especially Acting pervy the, <laughs> no, no yeah partly but mostly i didn't find it that pervy it was just like ah they're 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 kind of you know they just want to <clears throat> find a bush somewhere that's fine. Uh, yeah, people would have found a couple of the, bushes to be fair. Yeah, his his sense of humor has just been the the, the one consistent thing I know about him so far. Where it's mm -hmm. like, ah, he'll he'll crack a joke, and yeah. and he does that pretty well, I think. Uh, and he's young and naive, so that works sort of with his characterization. Like I, I I appreciated the oh yeah the Garden of Eden right outside of Moscow. Like that was fun. That was yes, fun. It was. 
It was. It was fun. It just seemed weirdly inappropriate with all these people dying around them. Yeah, at some point, yeah. But at the same time, I... I felt that more with the the, the her, his his love interest, the woman, uh, the the yeoman, uh, getting being so worried about the ship and everything, where he's like, mm-hmm. you can't do shit about it, and he's just trying to comfort her in his way, which is fine with me. You know, it's it's just like oh, we can't can't help it much, and we'll make the best of it if we if we get out of this alive. So, whatever. Um, that that I didn't have much of an issue with that if. If outside of the fact that her worrying doesn't add a whole bunch to it, outside like we need to get to them kissing, that's fine. I get that works for me. It's just the the shit around it in the mm-hmm. in the cabin still where I'm like, does this matter? Do we we still don't know nothing? Like we know we know jack shit about her character outside of I care about the people living in that ship. That's. Yep. I also Chekhov is pretty charming. That's that's all we know. Yeah. That so do, it doesn't it doesn't add depth. It's just no. there. It's like the the circumstances are too dire for them to stop and consider really truly consider like what they're doing to the society. Yeah. We don't know why Val is, or Val is there. We don't know why they're not allowed to touch or kiss or any of these things. Yeah. Um. I mean, that would lead to overpopulation within a couple generations, I guess, but... Maybe. You could also introduce contraception. <laughs> Paul <Yeah>. is... <laughs> should should be capable of that. Find, yeah, you would imagine think... some fucking flowers that make you imp- Like, not impotent. Uh, infertile. <laughs> Im- impotent <laughs> would be slightly cruel. You can fuck again, but good luck. <laughs> yeah. There's, you know, they, they did do a... Um... There was a um, a three part three issue comic book that uh, I think it was called Return of the Serpent or something like that, and mm-hmm. it was uh, it was from the comics, the DC comics in the eighties. And uh, I like that company. I do I do have it, mm-hmm. and I'll try to get it to you, and maybe we can record a, a special episode. Sure. Looking maybe I'll finally it. start the Patreon for DC Universe. <laughs> and we'll talk about it there. Because it very much DC does. Universe is not a podcast we do, honey. Uh, what? You said DC Universe. I think I think you meant Star oh, Trek Universe. <laughs> Star Trek Universe. Sorry, Jesus Christ. I uh, do DC fine. on screen. So, uh, yeah, it's maybe, a fun show. Yeah. I'm there occasionally. You can just maybe, listen to those episodes. Maybe we'll start uh, to actually launch the Patreon for Star Trek Universe. Uh, which right. I've had sitting around forever and I've just never launched it because I couldn't think of anything that anybody would care about that I would be able to produce on a regular basis. Fair. But, but that didn't stop you for DC on screen, really. So. It didn't, but I feel bad every day of my life because I'm not <laughs> producing more for that. I know, I know. Um, but yeah, who knows? But at the very least, it might be interesting because they do go into like... The Starfleet makes them go back to the planet and check it out and see, like, mm, let's see what you did here. And it's just the worst. It is, like, the worst. It's, <laughs> oh, like... that's lovely. There are now, like, there's a holy war going on. Oh, Like, the original great. worshippers of Val versus the worshippers <laughs> of the Federation and Kirk. Oh, of course. And oh. It's, it's, it's real bad. It's real bad. That's great. Things that's didn't great. didn't turn out well. No, of um, course not. <laughs> But that's 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 why it's so such a stupid episode at the end because it always ends up being, well, we 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 change them for the better, you know, in in a couple thousand years maybe if they uh, like survive that long to become a better society because yeah. in the meantime it's gonna be shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh Lord. Uh, so this is the episode in which the red shirt phenomenon comes to the fore. Every red shirted mm-hmm. male in the landing party dies horribly. It's good to be a woman, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Hindorf is killed by the plant's poison darts. Kaplan by the lightning. Mallory is blown up by an exploding rock, and Marple is killed by a blow to the head. Yep. They actually they did an good episode blow, apparently, or they also did, the um, landmine didn't like splatter a bunch of limbs everywhere that was that was nice of them for tv <laughs> yeah yeah there is a uh, I, I know you've seen a couple of the jj abrams movies there is they did an ongoing series 
uh, set in that universe because it's an alternate reality. Right. So you've, like, you've talked about that, like Kelvin timeline, slight different takes yeah, on the same core on, concepts, right? On these episodes, yeah, on the yeah. original series. And they did a version of this where one of the uh, Hindorf, mm-hmm. uh, who was called Cupcake, and who Kirk called Cupcake in the first movie, uh, he sure. has like a whole, is based around his story, but he's talking about like, you know, what if he has this whole thing where he poses. You know, what if we everyone had died horribly in the original? You know, if there's, I wonder if there's like an original universe, or I wonder if there's an alternate universe where everyone died horribly or some shit like that. <laughs> That's that lovely, lovely. Yeah, oh, yeah. Goodness. I screwed it up, but yeah, that that was a fun. No, series. I get it. Yeah, that was a fun that makes series sense. to to read through. Um, oh, delightful. Mm. Looks like uh, uh, Chekhov doesn't have his wig anymore, though. Oh right, yeah, it did look. Well, equally stupid, but less bad stupid. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, they were really trying to get that Davy Jones, like, Beatles haircut to I know, appeal to it just young girls. It looks like half a bowl cut. It's, it I does. It's funny because they, they, the reason they wanted, like, the young, relatable character who was kind of cute was to get, mm. like, girls and teenagers interested in Star Trek. But the way Pretty they sure all his... the girls were just there for Spock and Kirk making out. Oh, so, definitely, definitely. And like, is is the the funniest thing is like every time they have Chekhov on screen, he's not appealing to anyone, any teenagers, because like <laughs> the, he's he not... wants to bone too. Yeah, well, but he's just so goofy, you can't take him seriously. Yeah. And that's fine. It's I not going to draw you in. It's a nice comic relief. That's all it is. Yeah. And everyone kind of like uh, all the quote unquote adults, the senior mm. officers just kind of treat yeah. him like uh, idiot kid, you know? Yeah. So, cracking jokes again. But it doesn't make you as a teen feel included or, or like taken seriously. Right. It's just like, oh, he's, he's pretty funny. And we know nothing about him otherwise. It's like, damn it, Pavel. <laughs> We're in a life and death situation here. Take your tongue out of that yeoman's ear. <laughs> we did you get do... his first name for the first time. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because I think so. she said it. Yeah, I forgot her name already, but that's that's yeah, that's fine. I don't remember. Yeah. I've seen it a she million won't times. Turn, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, apparently the uh, Celeste Yarnall, who she was the person playing that uh, yeoman, ah, right. w- wore yeah. uh, Grace Lee Whitney's costume. The actress who, who played Rand. Oh. Janice Rand. Yeoman Rand. Blue? Blue 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 shirts. From red. Skirts, they were I red. Guess. They were red. Were they both red? Oh yep. my god. I'm 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 Mandela affecting myself now. Jesus. Um sure. Yeah, cool. she that makes she sense, wore, I guess. Uh, yeah, Rand's costume, left over from season one. And yeah. uh well, I make Bill, a new one. Bill Thies, the uh, costume designer. Had to recut it and refit it to suit her, and she sure. worried that Grace Lee Whitney might return and need the costume. But Bill Feast assured her she will <laughs> never return. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. She she won't. She won't. <laughs> and if you're interested, that comes from the These Are the Voyages TOS vol- uh, season two. Of um, yeah. Uh, interestingly, it's this, it's established in this episode that the warp nacelles can be discarded from the ship and that it is a dangerous process. Mm-hmm. And they also established that in the original script, in the original script, they called for an emergency saucer se- separation, which uh, means sure, whatever the, the big, you know, is. oh my God. Okay. So like the, the primary hull, the, se- yeah. the saucer section that looks like yeah, a yeah. circle yeah, can come off of the base. Oh, okay. Uh, and fly around independently. I didn't know that. When does that happen? <laughs> well, in, in the script, it called for an emergency separate uh, saucer separation, mm. but it was too expensive, and they mentioned that they might have to do it, but they didn't do it in this episode. Right. We will okay. not see it happen until the first episode of Next Generation. Ah, okay, okay. I didn't know that was possible, but that's a good thing to say for a new show where it's like, ah, we can do this now. Yeah. Watch it do some new tricks. You know. And it was, it uh, was really is, fun. So where just, just for me, 
where is what in this in in the enterprise like is engineering the the thing down below the propulsion and is the bridge in the saucer thing or how is yeah. it what is the layout okay the, that's okay the bridge roughly. is on the, the little bubble on top of the saucer yeah, i figured yeah section uh engineer you could find blueprints of course they were made at some point yeah <laughs> i figured yeah but like yeah the the engineering's you know in the secondary hole in the bottom yeah right yeah, okay essentially and lower decks are lower <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> fair enough yeah cool uh yeah <laughs> Also, by the way, looking at the images, like the the remastered comparisons again, why did they make the sky boring? In I don't the know. The remastered version, because the lightning looks so much better against the orange atmosphere. That I know there are remnants of that even in the remastered version. So why does it have to get regular dark and cloudy? You're lit. You're literally making it more boring I instead know. of more sci-fi. That's a weird choice. I Just mean that's one of the that that's there. also one of the things where it's like they in the remastered versions they were like let's make the planets look as boring as possible like they all just look like mm. earth and you're well, like that sucks I really liked when the planets were like bright orange bright red bright yeah. pink bright purple Give it some fucking color yeah yeah I mean you can I don't know I guess it doesn't make sense but I still miss that and it's hard to find. A, it doesn't you have, have to make sense. Like, none of it makes sense. It doesn't yeah. make sense in Earth colors either. I mean, it's a flavor. It's a yeah. flavor if, you know, if you're hung up on, you know, a bright, glowing, you know, bulb of a planet. If you have a problem about, with that and you're like, I wish it looked like an actual M-class planet seen oh. in later series. Okay, well, here's your remastered editions. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and you know, I I'm not gonna pull out DVDs to watch these, so I've no, got I the DVDs, that. but I'm not gonna pull Good them out. Yet. No, no, that's what DVDs are for—to have, you know, in case of apocalypse, you but have you can't, the, the physical yeah. copies. But you can't find like the original, the original effects Anywhere. episodes on streaming. Oh, not on streaming. No, of course that's, but that's like that's that's with everything. Like Star Wars is buried to like uh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. that's that's worse in some some regards so uh, just anyone going back in and uh, anyway uh, it's a choice but, it's a yeah choice. i i have my own little my own little qualms with uh, the the remasters because like there are shots of like the view screen mm -hmm. that just have like easily photoshopped or after affected out like they have hairs and cracks and little like burn marks <sighs> of the film and i'm like mm -hmm. just fix it just, just do fix that, that shit. shot. You took all this time to make sure that the little analog, like time flipper that showed mm. seconds and minutes and hours was suddenly digital. Yeah. But you're not going to fix like the, the awful little like crackles pieces from of, like at physical uh, film. Yeah. Like oh, dirt God. and hair on the film. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. It's stuff like that. It just annoys the shit out of me. That's and fair. if I'm being honest, in a lot in a lot of scenes, like one of the things I love is that in the original series, the original effects, they used a lot of stock shots of the Enterprise. Like whenever they shot the Enterprise from like the 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 pilots and the actual mm -hmm. model was different. Yeah. Um like the Enterprise would change it, the model looked different than the series model looked. So, but mm -hmm. like, so you'd see like the Enterprise fly by, and there are different markings on it. It's got like little like little nipples on the Bussard uh, <laughs> domes, you know. Like it looked different. Like the ship sure. looks different between shots, and they will yeah. cut to willy nilly to whatever stock shot they wanted to, without giving a shit about how the actual ship was supposed to look within continuity. The shit yeah. bugs me. All sure. right. And they fix that with the remastered versions, right? Yeah, because it's consistently the same model. Yeah. But also, I think the ship looks better in the original versions. Like, yeah, I get that. Because I, 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 I have very little good to say about the rainbow LEDs on the pro propulsion systems. It's, well, it's just I, slightly off to me. 
Well, you know what? Those are those are in versions of the original. You could find versions. Uh, right. Like I said, I haven't seen them in many of the stills on the right. episode thingies. But like, yeah, like you will see the ship in the original versions. They'll mm-hmm. have those little like rainbow things in the nacelles. Sure. And then, uh, and then, you know, the next shot, it'll be like the solid red because right. they're s- clipping to another stock shot. That makes sense. Um, and I, 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 maybe it's that cause I would prefer a solid color of light instead of, and it may flicker and mm. it may do whatever, but it doesn't make sense to me that it's like a lava lamp going, Ooh, now I'm blue. Now I'm orange. Like, yeah, that that's a little too silly for me, I guess. It's weird where I draw the the line, but it's a sensibility thing. It's not a rational thing. Yeah, no, I've, I've always liked the little little rainbow specks, but mm. um, I don't know. I I've just always wanted it to be consistent because Fair. of the way that the ship is supposed to look at certain eras. Yeah, and um, but also like the remasters. I mean, the ship looks better in some regards, like as far as like texture i guess to some degree but like the original ship was brighter and mm, yeah. you know so much so that like i don't i don't like how it, it is a lighter gray yeah yeah i don't like like such a dull gray on it but yeah I mean, these are like little less nitpicks. reflective in in some ways and yet it does it it's just the the era of cgi makes it slightly shiny in some ways where i'm like ah. Eh. It doesn't look. It it looks very CGI ish in in some mm-hmm. shots where you're like, ah, I'm not sure this is an improvement over a model. Yeah, and sometimes they got the proportions wrong, especially in early mm. remasters, which ah. doesn't correlate with what we're doing because we're doing like uh, production uh, order from the original. Yeah, broadcast or the original, and not the not production the remastered schedule. production order. Yeah, and when they did the remasters, they did them out of order. And then like, I of think course. one of the, uh, maybe the first one was balance of terror that they actually like finished sure. the remaster and aired it on TV. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, it's just, it doesn't matter. It's just a lot of little like bullshit things that I would talk about and think about. Of course. Uh, this is the being... shit we care about for, you know, not, <laughs> not a lot of good reasons, but we care. Yeah, I feel like they're about half the audience is going, Jesus Christ, wrap it up. <laughs> the fucking, fucking I mean you're listening to a Star Trek podcast. They're nerds too. They'll they'll get it. Maybe, maybe. I'm always surprised by the things that like people get mad at me for on these shows. Whereas, you know, every yeah, once in a while somebody's be because like, they're nerds and they care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's usually people who don't care, who are like, Why are you doing this? <laughs> Uh, why are you listening to this those those get to you <laughs> it's just it doesn't get to me it's just like weird it's like why are you listening why are you here like if you're not one of the nerds how did you come across us yeah <laughs> that's fair god knows we don't advertise <laughs> <laughs> it's just expensive. maybe they listen for the advertisements for other mm. shows yeah maybe All right. Uh, Well, the next episode, Effie Mm -hmm. and I will cover. We'll have a saying, mirror, mirror on the wall. Where the hell did that goatee come from? Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) I'm looking forward to the goatee now. Uh, One of the all-time classic episodes, Mirror, Mirror, which brings forth the Mirror Universe, Mm. legendary Mirror Universe, into the uh, annals of storytelling Yep. I, I, I'm, I, I, I've never heard the legend, so I'm very curious to get into this. Well, you know, just the general audience knows that in the in the mirror universe, Spock has a goatee, and that's what oh, we know. That's what we know. Okay, that's what the okay. general audience knows. I didn't know who 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 was going to have a goatee, so I'm I'm now I'm now I'm down for this. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I can't remember if you've ever seen Community. Uh, parts of it, just loose episodes on TV. Never, yeah. never all the way through. There is a concept they play with called the darkest timeline. Mm. <laughs> and in the darkest timeline, uh, Donald Glover and uh, Danny Pudi's characters, Troy and Abed, have, both have like fake felt goatees. 
stuck to their faces. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> a lot of I'm lot looking of, forward to this one. Yeah. Mirror Mirror launched the uh launched a lot of parodies. Apparently. Okay. That would be Spock, a good one. Spock's goatee looked real for the most part. Oh, thank goodness. It was it wasn't felt. Ah. I am I am relieved. Yeah. <laughs> I I also love that like uh in between episodes, you were like, yeah, I saw a picture from Mirror Mirror, and it's like, Kirk is hiling. <laughs> yeah, I was, it's it's just, I open up the, the next memory alpha page for, you know, what are we going to watch next? And I try not to read the synopsis. Yeah. And I, and, but I do get to see, you know, the cat in cat spot. Like, there's, there's a single frame they use as the, the image on yeah. memory alpha, and it's like. Oh, we're we're not seeing hard, are we? Who? What is the context? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, it's a, it's a one of my favorite episodes, and uh, I look forward to watching it and seeing how flawed it actually is. Because I I tend to be you know when I'm just sitting and watching stuff for fun, I don't really pay mm. attention to stuff so much. But and like then you have to talk about it with me. No one, I've got to talk about it with you. <laughs> actually yeah. matt too like if i'm watching it with matt like i'm like oh god what's he gonna bring up about like how's he gonna uh, come he's up gonna with... he's gonna throw me some fucking oh, yeah. i didn't see this coming <laughs> yeah sometimes sometimes but like yeah i i know you're like especially like uh socially conscious where i'm just like to me yeah i take this shit for granted because i'm just like oh yeah i've been watching this since i was a kid it was the 60s right, right, right. yeah they're kind of fucked up about stuff Oh, but absolutely. it's fine. But that's but, that's usually how I respond too. Where it's like, uh, it makes sense for the time, but boy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it, but it's, that's one of the things that I find really interesting, and it's one of the reasons I really have enjoyed doing this with you because this is you're a new voice, and I've been watching this shit forever, and you're a person yeah. who hasn't seen any of this shit. So it's on top of just being friends with you and enjoying you in general outside like, of just having conversations being fun it's it's yeah it's, it's kind of bringing it's it back colliding. it's yeah. bringing star trek back to life for me like old star trek back to life in a way that i haven't felt in a long time of course yeah because so, it is like watching it through new eyes in a sense yeah. you're sharing in the experience of oh what is it like to a, a fresh set of eyes how is it different yeah. Uh, after all these years. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. And uh, thank you for doing Sounds this. Sounds like with we me. came up with a pretty, pretty good show, actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe. We should maybe do we more could. of these. Yeah. We will. And the next one is going to be <laughs> Mirror Mirror. <laughs> right. Uh, and I hope you all enjoy uh, you all uh, enjoy the show and join us for uh, that. And uh, next time, until next time, I should say, uh, Joel Antru, live long. Prosper, and of course, eat a dick, people. Eat a dick. Or don't. I mean, it's up to you, really. Like, live your life. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna check, you know? Yeah. Like, you do your homework or you don't, but it's, yeah. it's on you if you if you learn or, or will end up struggling later in life when you do have to, like, come right. across a situation where you need to eat a dick. But, importantly... School lied to you. All the tests in real life are open book. That is that is a fact. <laughs> Unless you're without a calculator and need to rely on doing maths in your brain cells and uh, fail miserably. And I've never humiliated. needed. That. I have never needed to do math that bad. <laughs> Not bad enough. Fair enough. You can always avoid it. That's that's the real strategy you learn in uh -huh. life. Real life lessons. From the uh -huh. Star Trek universe. <laughs> All right. I'm done. <laughs> Fair. Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. 